and action. Hello, all you beautiful kitty cats, cats, kittens, whatever you want to call yourselves. We're back. Episode four, like the four horsemen of the waft. And right now the waft is me because I have not showered today and I don't smell nice. No. 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 Happy wedding week to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in case you've been living in a hole, it's not actually our wedding week because we had to postpone it. Sigh. Sigh. But the weather is supposed to be shitty in Colorado Springs on Friday. Rainy and chilly. So weather positive gods. Positive vibes. Are with us. You know what? We look, we find the positive in things. Yes. A constant message of what we got going on is find the positive things. And we've got a dog and a cat separated that are trying to uh, not go at each other. But yes, welcome live from the Franklin Bedroom Podcast Studios. Let's do this thing. If we're going to keep this under 10 minutes, we got to get rolling. Um, right into it. <laughs> so it's supposed to be our wedding week, as we mentioned. It is not our wedding week. But uh, we are getting married in September, so it's going to happen. It's all good. Um, but I think we said on episode one, we would eventually talk about how this happened. Yeah. How this ended up with this. And he's not paying me. I know, it's shocking. Shocking. Not getting paid. Shocking. She must have ate paint chips or something when she was a kid. I don't know. <laughs> don't know. That's a whole different story. Out kicking my coverage by a mile and a half. Mile and a half. Maybe two, two and a half. Six. Six, <laughs> six miles. Um, or the Proclaimers, 500 miles. Whatever you want to call it. So, anyway. Shit. I don't even know where to start. Is that our love story? Yeah. Like, how, well, how far we... Instead of a guy walks into a bar, a guy walks into a cycling studio. Yeah. Guy walks into a cycling studio. Uh, God, how deep do we want to get into this? I only got 10 minutes, so it definitely can't be, like, too deep. But, okay. you know, you walk into the cycling <laughs> studio to take a class, and I'm the teacher. And uh, the reason I'm taking this class is because... I am potentially going to be an instructor, but I've never taken a cycle bar class before, so I need to see what it's all about. And I take this first class, can't get my shoes clipped in, don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, but I'm like, my teacher's hot. <laughs> like, just just kind of thinking to myself. That was me, by the way. Yeah, I'm just like, she's attractive. Um, and then we took the class, and she just kept on staring me down the whole That's time. That's a lie. I honestly, I do remember him because, so he came, my best friend is the instructor developer for our studio. And so she brought him in to take a class with her. So I remember him riding next to Erica, and I remember looking at him like, this dude is big, he looks awful on a bike, he's got long hair, like what is happening and then obviously we were talking after class because erica was there and she was like oh this is dwight he's trying out to be a cycle star and after class i of course like sarcastic me i was like ha like we're never gonna see him again and my thought was this bitch who does she think she is <laughs> and if anyone knows me they know i am determined as all hell and will accept pretty much any challenge and if i'm gonna do something i'm gonna go out so I took like 20 classes in the span of 30 days to get mm -hmm. there. But so that was in March, I think I took 20 classes. But this class of yours I took was in like in November. Yeah. So, like all cycle bars, things are delayed. We were supposed to open in January. Like ours was supposed to open in July, but things take forever with permitting. So, you that's why you interviewed in November, but then there was permitting issues and stuff. So, we didn't open mm -hmm. that studio until May. But we started talking because you had to take 20 classes and the majority of those classes were mine because he was trying to suck up to me. And so that's how we started talking was because you were in my classes and we were all friends with Erica. And one night you slid into my DMs because I was having a bowl of honey bunches of oats for dinner and he was having a bowl of honey bunches of oats for dinner. And so he slid into my DMs yep. and was like, oh my God, me too or whatever. And then we just started talking on Instagram message, but I knew, let's preface this, a huge part of the story. Yeah, so there's a huge part of the story that's not out there yet. is he has a girlfriend who he's going to propose to. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. So This is where the story gets good now. It's interesting. Now that it's like a soap opera. Erica had told me this. She was like, yeah, he has a girlfriend. It's so cute. He's going to propose to her. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. They were doing long distance. So she lived in like Indiana and Dwight lived in Kentucky. And every weekend he would go visit her. And I was like, so cute. Because like, I was not interested really. Like I was like, whatever. He has a girlfriend from day one. I knew that. And I wasn't interested either, by the way. I just thought she was hot. And right. I was just like, whatever. Like, I want to be an instructor. I know that either her or Erica is going to be able to help me. So Yeah. So he slid into my DMs and we just started talking about like random shit. Like how he hates cats and he never wants to meet Macklemore. <clears throat> Fast forward, he's obsessed with Macklemore. He's not actually a cat. He's a dog. Swear to God. And so, and we, I don't know. We just started bullshitting, your favorite term, over like random shit that we just like could. It was such an easy conversation. And somehow it came up that it is my lifelong dream to be a Formula One driver, but also to be a professional bowler. Dwight Kingpin over here. is really good at bowling. And somehow that got into the conversation. And I was like, well, will you be my bowling coach? And will you teach me? And so he was like, I'll do that if you help me at Cycle Bar. So we started hanging out. We went bowling. And then we would meet at Cycle Bar. And I would help him like go through his music and talk about like classes and things like that. And um, during all this, so this is in like February. March, February. During all of this, there was no physical contact, no. no nothing. I would even, not even like a ton of flirting. No, really. like, we were literally just, just like friends talking, talking yeah. on Instagram. And then over time, I remember I had to work hard to get your phone number just because I was tired of Instagram messaging. So we went to like texting and um then so we were hanging out um this and is then, going over 10 minutes by the way this, yeah this we'll one's, big, this one's the exception we'll try and speed it up yeah but it's our wedding week so we're gonna take our damn time um i remember one time when we were bowling like you were bowling and i actually like looked at you for the first time and i was like oh here's my triceps yeah like i was like he's kind of he's kind of hot and then, but I was like, eh, like whatever. Like he, he's, he had told me how he was going to propose to this girl in June. Because I would openly talk about my yeah. other relationship. Oh yeah. And he like, would visit, he would FaceTime her because like it progressed to, so when you become a cycle star, you have a boot camp, and it's four days of intensive training with a senior master instructor, eight hours a day. Kari, so, what up? Shut up. Yeah. Kari witnessed our love. So did Erica. So, um, and so for the boot camp, you can get, you get cut. Like there's cuts. If you don't make it, like they cut you. And I was like, I like Dwight. He's my friend. I can't have him get cut. So we really started to hunker down on like, I would come over to your house and, and I have a sectional couch that is massive. We would sit on opposite ends. I think they've already heard about your shit brown couch that takes up the whole room, but it's that couch. We would sit on opposite ends and just like talk about music or classes or whatever. You know, I, this is another random thing. Like I had something very serious going on in my life at that time where I was, I didn't like to be home. And so I would just go to his house and I would like for some reason, I felt comfortable telling you about it. And I had told no one about it. Yeah. And so we bonded over that because I had a place to like hang out when I couldn't be home. Um, and when it really started to get serious was we, we were going to go bowling that one time before boot camp, like the day before boot camp. But we sat outside because the bowling was rented oh, out. Oh, yeah. Bowling was rented out. And yeah, we yeah. sat outside on the bench and talked for like an hour. And I remember leaving that being like, this is weird. Like, it's weird that we're like, we spend so much time together. Talking to him is easy. And I really enjoy hanging out with him. And again, there's no touching. No touching. Not even a hug when we leave. Like, no. nothing. Like, we had a handshake. No, the first hug was in boot camp. So, yeah. then we have boot camp where we're spending eight hours a day together. Meanwhile, Erica already knows. She's like, you guys are Harry and Sally. You're like, you're denying your love. I have no clue. I've never we seen still haven't watched it. But so she called us funny. Harry and Sally. Yeah. So every day during lunch, we would go to lunch together, just the two of us. And that's when people were like, Kari was like, this is stupid. Like we all know what's happening, but I was like, nothing's happening. Literally, we're literally just friends. We just like, like hanging out together. And then after at nights, I would have to go to dinner with like Kari, Erica and our owner. And they would talk about like the list of like, who's going to get cut. And I would always be like, Oh my and they're like top three are and Dwight would always be top three so I'd be like whoo he's not getting cut we're fine he's gonna live another day and uh he made it through boot camp 
Shocking. If you've taken my class, yeah. shocking. <laughs> One of the days during boot camp, again, I was going through something emotional. Someone played Skinny Love. I started crying, and you came to give me a hug. And it you was, denied it was the our shit first out of me. Hug, but denied I denied the, the shit out of him because he's a sweaty she was, human. She was like this. He's and a sweaty it was, human. It was real awkward, honestly. And I don't like being emotional, but that was our first hug. It was very awkward. Yeah. So then after boot camp, I, we just started hanging out more and more, opposite ends of the couch. Just, like, grocery shopping. He introduced me to Aldi. Like Shout out, Aldi. Love you guys. And I remember one time we went to Aldi and we went grocery <laughs> shopping. And I was like, I literally have fun with this guy doing everything. Like, that, you know, like, I literally have fun with him grocery shopping. The main part, though, is when you went to Georgia. That's when I knew. Yeah, so remember, I have a girlfriend during all this. Yes. She, it was weird because, obviously, I didn't. I was just like... We're just friends, but I can't tell this girl, like, hey, I'm just hanging out with this other person as friends who's helping me develop as an instructor. Like, it was just a hairy situation. And because I was like, I'm not doing anything wrong. We're literally just hanging out. But I feel like if you tell a female that, she's probably going to freak out. <laughs> like, yeah. When they're good... distance, I yeah. think when you're distance and you're hanging out with another girl, even if it's just hanging out, it's, you know, it's not, it's not good. No. <laughs> even though we weren't doing anything. But he goes to Georgia with her. Yep. To, for her sister's, like, volleyball tournament. And he had said to me in advance, he was like, hey, I'm going to be slow to respond to your text messages because I'm going to be with my girlfriend and I don't want her to, like, freak out that we're talking. So I was like, fine, whatever. On, like, Saturday night, I'm sitting on my couch. It's, like, 8 o'clock at night. And I was like, he's probably hanging out with his girlfriend or, like, in bed with his girlfriend. And that's why he's not responding to me. And I went insane. And I was like, Shit. I have feelings for this guy. And she, rewinding, never been in love before. No. And so I'm yeah. sitting there like, this is stupid. So he gets home. I go over to his house on Sunday and I, and we're hanging out and then I leave and I FaceTime him and I say, Hey, we have to break up. We can't be friends. We have to break up as friends. We have to break up as friends. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, we can't be friends anymore because in my mind and I'm smart was like, What's the end game for me? Like, end game is his girlfriend moves to Louisville and there's no way, like, what? We're going to be three of us, like, best friends? No. Or he moves away and then, again, I am get shit on, basically. Either situation sucks for me because I'm falling for a guy who is going to propose to a girl. I had a ring. <laughs> he had a ring in his dresser. So I was like, there's no way he's going to leave her. So either situation sucks for me. So I was like, we cannot be friends. Like, I have to end this because I'm the one who ends up getting hurt and we're just friends. So let's be done. And you did then, not like this idea. No, I was like, this is, wait a second. And that's where I think it started to, I think over time is a progressive, like something, like you said, something is off or what is this? Is it more than friends? Um, and I'm just, I'm in a real predicament, real unsalted pretzel without cheese situation, which if you have pretzels, you never have it without salt, you never have it without cheese. That's what we called it. It was, no one wants an unsalted yeah. pretzel without cheese. Exactly. So was it Monday you came over then? The next day? So then the next day, I, we were hanging out every day now, basically, because we liked each other and I couldn't be home. So I went over on Monday and that's when... Is this the 91% or is that Tuesday? No, this is Monday, and we're sitting on the couch, and he, he... I'm trying to drop hints here. Yeah, and there might have been... This is back in the day when, like, I did drink a little bit, and so he... We were, like, liquid courage. We had a couple drinks, and we were sitting on the couch, opposite sides of the couch, just talking about, like, I don't know how we are friends or whatever, and he says, I'm 91% sure that I want to marry this girl. And I expect fucking smarty pants over here to be like, oh, I wonder if I'm the other 9%. I think I needed him to directly say nope. it. Like, I knew he was dropping hints, but I was like, no, I'm I'm not going to reveal my feelings. I'm I'm not going to reveal my deck of cards until I know for sure what he's putting down. And then she's just like, oh, yeah. And then we talked for like 30 more minutes, me just trying to pry like something out of her nothing. That was the night I spent the night on the couch. Was it? Yeah, because again, like I couldn't go home. So I slept on the couch when I slept over and he slept in his bedroom. And then... Thur so let me preface this with Thursday morning at 4 a.m. I'm leaving for the Galapagos for two weeks with my best friend, my mom. And he offers to drive me to the airport at 4 a.m. Like, should have known what guy does that. A nice guy. Yeah, That's to what. go to the Galapagos. So then Tuesday night, we redo the whole, like, let's have a few cocktails and tell the truth. And that's when I was like, well, I don't want, I think you asked, like, something. And I was like, I don't want 
you know, you to marry your girlfriend. I don't remember how the... Yeah. I don't remember how it happened. There was alcohol involved. But somehow we both went on the same page of, like, we want this to be, like, something. But, but it's also complicated. And also, again, amongst all this, there is no, no contact, no nothing. Because let me preface all this after 15 minutes. Yeah. That I've been cheated on twice. So I've been kicked in the dick very... Very strongly twice. And if you've ever been kicked in the dick, doesn't feel good. Does not feel good at all. Um, right in the beanbags, actually. Yeah. So I was just like, I can't cheat. Like, I yeah. need to figure this shit out because I'm not putting her through what I've been through. So I'm just like, conversations. And then through all this, I was just like, okay, there's got to be underlying issues with my other girlfriend if I'm talking to you this much and having these feelings. So... I tried taking you out of the equation and be like, okay, what is the true issues I'm having with my other relationship? And then you left for two weeks. Yeah, well, before I left, so then Wednesday night, um, we I was leaving at 4 a.m. So again, I spent the night. We stayed up till 3 a.m. talking when we had to get up at like 4 a.m. And then I went to work the whole night, right? <laughs> and we, yeah, we were just talking about like what we were going to do and what the solution was. So then I left for two weeks in the Galapagos with no service. And, and again, when I left Erica, hold on, when I left her at the airport, no hug, no, gave her our handshake. Our handshake. We still had it. Like, we like, no contact. Um, so then I leave and my best friend Erica is like, don't talk to him for two weeks. Like, just don't do it. And I was like, ha, oh, you're funny, Erica. We talked like And then she day. told me that. She was just like, Erica said I shouldn't talk to Because I get it. Like, make the distance. Distance makes the heart go fronder. Like, cut him off and then see what he comes up with in two weeks. A.K.A. Hey, leave your girlfriend. But I was like, he's also my best friend. And I don't want to leave for two weeks. Have him forget me and stay with his girlfriend. Anyway, so I was in the Galapagos. While you, I was in the Galapagos, you broke up with your girlfriend. Not right away, though. It was like day 10 because I kept going back and forth. I'm like, what the did I get myself into here? No, like, your pro- his only problem was we got to make this twenty minutes. His only problem was not his feelings for me. He didn't want to hurt his girlfriend's feelings because Dwight's super nice. He doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings, so he was like, "How do I break up with someone without hurting their feelings?" Well, you don't. It's a shitty situation. The real oh shit moment for me was I like I talked to multiple people. Every time I talked to people, they would always be like, "It sounds like you like Emily." I'm like, "Yep, you're sure right." And the one thing that sucked is Emily's like, I've never fallen for everyone. I've never cried over a guy before. So I point blank asked her one time when she was in the Galapagos. I go, if I end up choosing to stay with my girlfriend, would you cry? And she says, yes. And I go, motherfucker. Like, no. I'm about to break someone's heart one way or the other. And that's, You didn't choose to break mine. And I was just like, this sucks. So not a fun situation. But then she came back on May 6th. May 6th was when I came back and we got together. Picked her up from the airport. And finally, for the first time, we kissed. So I broke up with someone <laughs> that I had a ring for and dated for almost two years to go with someone that I never had any physical contact with. Talk about just trusting your heart and going for it. Yeah. Um, but it worked out. I mean, we're not experts in relationships, but I people always say that you should marry your best friend. And that's why I'm confident in us is because for legit, like, months you were my best yeah. friend before anything physical mm -hmm. and through our best friendship that like physical developed yeah and that's why i'm confident in like even if we go, will go through rough seasons but there's no one else who i want to hang out with more than you like i want to do life besides with her cat you <laughs> yes i mean my cat is my best friend dwight is number two found him oh oh stop <laughs> it he just hunkered at the door listening oh hi babies are you yes. my best friend? So, anyway. So <laughs> twenty yeah. minutes, let's go. Yeah. So that, that's our love story. That was that was the love story, guys. And uh, a love story of me and Mac will come at a later date. That's just that's not even we we could go on for hours about our love story, huh? Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I we probably left stuff out there. That was most of it though. So yeah, it was a crazy situation. And then after uh getting uh starting dating we said i love you two days later and then pretty much moved in together right off the bat and i literally have messages of him saying i never want to meet your cat i hate cats for the record i still do not like cats this is a dog I swear to god <laughs> see that oh. he, he barked oh, no. he barked <laughs> um and on that note i think we're still under 20 so this is like a double episode call it a double yeah. episode if you got any questions about relationships, probably don't ask us. Yeah. 
<laughs> but if you want to, go ahead. So that is episode two. Episode two. Four. Episode, episode four. four. <laughs> it's been a night. Episode four of The Waft. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you made it this far along. If you want us to talk about any other subject, let us know, or else we're just going to see what's wafting in the air. Until next time, peace out, Cub Scouts.